So, let us have some interactive problem solving sessions by, by students who have taken this course. Uh, so, you will see some uh, illustrations and examples into problem solving uh, which is useful to understand and digest the concepts learnt during the lectures. Uh, so, hello uh, this problem uh, occurred in the year 2014 uh, in the homework 1 and in the MMTSP course in IAC and we are going to solve it. I am Ankur, uh, I am a student here in IAC. So, almost always we need to truncate real numbers to integers when realizing algorithms in hardware. For example, we have FPGA or we have DSP kits where the incoming signal will be continuous and we will have to truncate uh, to de decimal points and convert into digital uh, values so that we can perform certain algorithms. So, one such class of operations are the well known floor and ceiling functions uh, namely f of x is uh, shown like this and c of x. So, for example, f of, f of 2.5 that is floor of 2.5 will floor it to the nearest integer which is 2 which is below the 2.5 value and ceiling is the nearest integer which will take it to the next integer which is above it which is that is ceiling of 2.5 is 3. So, now consider x is a random variable which is Gaussian distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma square. So, obviously x is a continuous random variable and what we are doing is uh, performing operations that, I, that is the seal function and the uh, floor functions are functions of these random variables and we are going to determine the mean and variance of these random variables after the floor and seal operations. So, hope the question is clear. Now, uh, we realize that uh, since x is a uh, continuous random variable and c of x and f of x that is the ceiling and the floor functions are integer random variables. Uh, so, they will take only discrete uh, values uh, which are integer values. So, we know that uh, uh, by observation that c of x is going to be minus f of minus f x. So, and the uh, second observation is c of x minus f of x is going to be 0 if x is an integer. And 1 otherwise. Now, since x is a random variable, is a continuous random variable. We have probability of x is an integer is 0. So, most of the weight or the measure of x is over the non integer values. So, let mu c and mu f be the means of c of x and f of x respectively. and let sigma c squared and sigma f squared be the respective variances. Now, we realize that from this, uh, this equation that um, u c is going to be minus of expectation of f of minus x right which is the expect uh, which is equal to uh, for example the expectation of the c of x so this is equal to minus of minus infinity to plus infinity and f of x 
uh, f of minus x. So, it takes the value uh, f of minus x and what is the pdf of uh, x? It is the Gaussian. So, it is 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma squared sigma and uh, we assume uh, the I mean we know that uh, the va the variance of the original uh, random variable Gaussian uh, is sigma squared. So, we use that assumption here and the pdf of that is this. So, this uh, becomes equal to minus of minus infinity to plus infinity by making use of uh, x is equal to minus y we have 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma squared e power minus y square by 2 sigma squared dy. So, we realize that this is actually the mean of the floor function come uh, operating on the random variable x. So, mu c is equal to minus f this is one of the equations let us call it star. Secondly, uh, we realize uh, that since c of x is, is c of x minus f of x is going to be 0 if x is an integer and 1 otherwise. So, we realize that mu c minus mu f is equal to 0 into probability that x is an integer plus. So, we realize that the c of x minus f of x is 0 if x is an integer and 1 otherwise. So, what is happening is this is like an indicator function which indicates the difference is uh, uh, this difference c of x minus f of x what type of values it takes. So, 0 or 1. So, it just becomes 1 whenever x is not an integer and it becomes 0 when, whenever x is an integer. So, when we take expectation on both sides expectation of c of x minus f of x uh, it becomes expectation on the right hand side also. So, what happens is it takes the value 0 with the uh, with the probability x not x is an integer and it takes a value 1 when x is not an integer. So, when we take the expectation on both sides we get a mu c minus mu f is equal to. So, what is the expectation on the right side? So, 0 the value it takes a value 0 with, uh, with the probability that x is an integer and it takes a value 1 when x is not an integer. So, now uh, we realize that uh, from this equation uh, probability that x is an integer is 0 and uh, probability that x is not an integer is 1. So, this uh, equates to one. So, we have two equations which is mu c minus mu f equal to 1 and mu c plus mu f equal to 0. By solving these two equations we get mu c is equal to plus 0.5 and mu f is equal to minus 0.5. Now, originally uh, just to uh, analyze this point just to ponder upon what is what we what results we have got here x was a continuous random variable and it was uh, it was a continuous random variable, variable it was taking both positive and negative values and it had a mean 0. So, what is happening essentially is the seal function uh, has a mean around 0.5 and the floor function is having a mean around uh, minus 0.5. So, uh, both of them are equally uh, um, sort of opposing each other and uh, so that the mean of the continuous random variable is x. So, this seal function will be uh, centered around 
uh, here and uh, the floor function will be centered around minus 0.5. Now we compute, uh, we go on to compute the, the variances, uh, for that um, we compute the expectation of the seal function squared which is equal to uh, from this equation, from this equation which is equation 1. which is equal to expectation of 1 plus f of x the whole square which is equal to expectation of 1 plus 2 f of x plus f of x squared which is 1 plus 2 times expectation of f of x plus expectation of f of x squared. So, now uh, um, we previously we know that from the result that mu this is basically mu f which is minus 0.5 and this is expectation of f of x squared. So, this is actually expectation of f of x squared. So now we have uh, the so variance of sigma c squared will be ex essentially expectation of c of x squared minus expectation of c of x the squared and mu f squared will be expectation of f of x squared minus expectation of f of x the whole squared. Now, to compute these is uh, uh, little challenging um, and uh, we from these equations we realize that uh, this is actually expectation of c of x squared minus mu c squared. So, this is sigma squared and uh, sigma f squared is this is expectation of f of x squared minus mu f square and uh, since these two parts are equal and uh, mu c squared is equal to mu f squared which is equal to the square of 0 0.5 which is 0 0.25. What we have is uh, sigma c squared is equal to sigma f squared. So, both their variances are same. We saw that uh, sigma c squared is equal to sigma f squared. Uh, however, there is no closed form expression for the variance. Uh, the variance can be computed using the PMFs of the seal and the floor. Okay, so, the PMF is given by first uh, we, we see probability of the seal function taking a value n is equal to the probability that n minus 1 lies between x and n. Right? So, this is equal to the integral from n minus 1 to n and dx and the probability that the floor function takes a value n is equal to the probability that n is less than or equal to x less than n which is equal to the integral from n which means is n plus 1, n plus 1, 1 by square root of 2 pi sigma squared e power minus x square by 2 sigma square dx. 
Now, if we have to uh, do this on a computer, what we will do is we will assume uh, sigma squared equal to 1 and uh, we make use of this function called erf of x which is given by 2 by root by 0 to x e power minus t squared dt. So, what we have here is uh, this expression and we need to make use of the erf function in MATLAB so that uh, it becomes computable. So, this is actually equal to um, 0 to n 1 by square root of 2 pi if we substitute uh, sigma squared equal to 1 uh, what we have is e power minus x squared by 2 dx minus 0 to n minus 1 1 by square root of 2 pi e power minus x squared by 2 dx this is with sigma squared equal to 1. So, uh, we see that uh, we have a form here and we want it in the form of ERF function. So, this evaluates to um, half of 0 to n 2 by square root of 2 pi e power minus x square by 2 dx minus half of 0 to n minus 1 2 by root 2 pi e power minus x square by 2 dx. Now, if you make the substitution x is equal to t over root 2, what we get here is if we just demarcate it, what we get here is this evaluates to half of the ERF function of n over root 2 minus half of erf function n minus 1 over root 2. Similarly, uh, this expression evaluates to half of erf function of n plus 1 over root 2 minus half of erf function of n over root 2. So, we have a MATLAB code here uh, which does the job and uh, we can uh, select a range uh, from minus 100 to 100 and f is a factor of uh, 1 by root 2 and this code can be used to compute the variance and this can uh, simplify the, uh, the expressions. Thank you. Yeah, a small correction, uh, the right substitution is x is equal to root 2 t. This will make sure that the probability uh, that we compute the PMF we get is in terms of the ERF function. and uh, the MATLAB code will execute the, the code and uh, we get the PMF in the right way. That is it. Thank you.